All right, so welcome to a pretty unusual build log around here. We are gonna be building ourselves a badass new router. Yes, we've got a wicked new internet connection. We need a wicked new custom PFSense box to go with it. So come along for the ride, because this one, I promise you, is going to be interesting. The Master Case 5 from Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid tower case your own with modular parts and accessories. Click on the link in the video description to learn more. You missed there, Linus. Yeah, first thing I need to do is uh, follow my own rules about no garbage in the new office there. Next, let's have a look at the hardware we're gonna be using. So step one is CPU. We've got a low power Intel Xeon CPU. This is an E31260L. This is an Intel S1200KP server board provided by Kingston. We've got kind of a special stick of memory in here. So this is a low profile DDR3 DIMM. We've got a 1U server case. So this is a rack mountable case that'll be going in our new cabinet from Norco. You could install up to, I believe, an ATX size board in here if you really wanted to, but we're just gonna be installing an ITX board because we're gonna be using this space over here for an expansion card. Yes, it's an i340T4 quad port network card, and we're actually gonna be installing that sideways. We're also gonna need, this was provided by Anthony over at NCIX, so huge thanks to the NCIX Tech Tips crew. This is a PCI Express extension. Uh, what else we got for hardware? Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to be using an SSD. Yes, I know PFSense can run off a USB stick. I don't care. Uh, the next, uh, this is a really cool piece of hardware. So this, a 1U redundant power supply. So each of these is an 80 plus gold, 250 watt power supply. And then you can actually slide these modules out. Last piece of hardware, this is a super micro heatsink. And that's another challenge in a 1U case. You can't even use a stock Intel cooler. You might be thinking to yourself, gee, Linus, that doesn't have any fans on it. How's it gonna cool the CPU? Great question. I think this is definitely the most constrained case that I've ever worked in. The part I was worried about was the clearance at the back. Now I already know about some challenges that I'm gonna have fitting our power supply in this case. So the board goes in here, and you can see all of my ports stick through just fine, but the case is actually shorter than a standard IO shield. If I mark this really carefully, I can basically just hack it off with a Dremel tool. Oh, I'm getting so much metal in my eye. Not too shabby, I hope. Oh wow, I way overdid it. <laughs> look at that. So that is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so the next step is to get our CPU installed. So the CPU we're using is a uh, 1260L. We could swap this out with relative ease if we needed a beefier router. Uh, let's go ahead and install our backplate. Oh, okay. This chip on the back is interfering with our back plate. Shoot. And we're gonna need the angle grinder for this. This is not a Dremel task. Okay. Not bad at all. Just clean it off. I might wanna take that in a little bit tighter. So there, we've dug out a little bit more material. Still fairly strong, I mean, strong enough to hold a cooler on, so. Ah, yeah, there we go. So you've got lots of clearance around the contacts for that chip there. So orientation here is key because the airflow only goes one way. So our CPU cooler needs to be, you have got to be kidding me. We are making contact with the pins on a fan header right there. So the speaker's okay but that bit next to the pins has to go. This is intended to sit right flat against the back of the board, but there's quite a few things on the back of this board. We might just barely be able to screw into that back plate. And then this corner. 
Yeah, that goes in. It's a fair bit of flex on the board, but uh, nothing deadly. Nothing deadly. I think we should just hack off the top of this speaker too. It should be enough to get the job done. I just don't want those pins to touch. Yeah, take that speaker. We've been at this for like an hour and we've installed an IO shield and installed a CPU in a socket. I haven't even managed to put a heatsink on. Cold thermal compound there. Let's put the back plate on again. So if I can just get this on here, then we're good. Okay, no clearance issues this time. Not too shabby. Next step, put motherboard in case. So this heat sink basically sits millimeters from the top of the chassis, meaning that you cannot install a fan on there. Most 1U coolers are like uh, side blowers. You know, we wanted to leave ourselves room for a, a beefier CPU in the future if we wanted it, so that option was not going to work for us. We're gonna have to be careful when we slide this on. We gotta kinda... Okay. This is the next big challenge. I had no idea that there even were standards for 1U power supplies. These two are not the same one. The way that this goes in just has absolutely nothing to do with what the back of this power supply looks like. That leaves me basically cutting the case to get this in here. So I need to get this in here and I need to secure it somehow. You know what, let's just hot glue it in because I don't feel that comfortable drilling into the side of a power supply, the last place you want metal shards. Okay. Go in, go in, go in. Push down. Cable management is gonna be key for achieving any kind of proper airflow in a system like this. Yep, power LED is green. So this, my friends, is where we start to get into why it was important that we use this uh, low profile ECC memory. A full height dim would pretty much block airflow to our fins. Now, some boards have the dims this way, this one does not. So we have to deal with what we're given to work with here. Next step, mounting the PCI Express card. Oh, cool. You can actually install it either way. Wow, I don't know if we're even gonna get a 4X extender in here. Our cable management is done. So we have a nice clear path to, oh balls. So we have a nice clear path from our fans to everything here that needs to be cooled. The heatsink on our NIC, the heatsink on our CPU, and all that's left to do is close her up and find out how she runs. Now what I'm actually gonna do is put windows on this machine first, just so that I can use nice familiar testing tools in order to evaluate cooling, because I am a little bit worried about this CPU. So we were defeated. We were defeated by a dead motherboard, but eBay to the rescue. I can't say enough good things about eBay. I ordered this motherboard, a 250 watt power supply and four gigs of RAM. At least I got the motherboard. Fortunately, I didn't need that other crap. So let's go ahead and rebuild the machine this time with a, oh, working motherboard. Oh crap. I can't even do it right the second time around. Let's try putting the actual cooler backplate on here. I don't know how I missed this before, but on the old board, which fortunately we can now use as a, as a, as a tester for the additional cutting that it looks like we're gonna be doing, there are a couple of components here that are clearly interfering with the backplate still. So we actually need to do more backplate cutting. So in theory, this finally actually fits on the board. Okay, great. It shouldn't be this much effort to build a router. This is why most people probably buy a router. I mean, they have them, they have them at the store. They have a whole aisle called routers. Ah, yeah, thermal compound. 
All right, and this speaker. Maybe I'll just rip this off this time. That seems ill-advised on my working board, doesn't it? We could use the sacrificial board to find out if you can rip the speaker off. <coughs> okay, you can't. Now we know. We can use a Dremel. If I can find it. Oh yeah, there it is, sure. There we go. In theory, we are ready to rock. Let's see if it's on. Nothing ever takes as long as it's supposed to. Okay, that's in. Let's put our cable management nonsense back into place. I mean, that's nice. At least I don't have to plan out the cable management anymore since I've already done it once. There we go. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna think there's a, yeah, there we go. So in theory, this time, this stupid thing powers on. All right, come on, baby. Please work. What? Okay, I'm at a total loss right now. I'm not sure what just happened. I have nothing to say at this point. I, I think something about our config just killed another board, but I don't understand why that would happen because the only thing in here that I haven't run in this board before is a PCI Express riser and um, RAM, which shouldn't make a board scream and then die. It's unheard of. But I think we just killed another board. Exact same behavior as last time. We were getting beeps and then we stopped getting beeps. Our working hypothesis right now is that this is some kind of connector that I've never seen before and was actually providing power to the motherboard instead of acting as like an RPM sense or something. So we're testing with the multimeter now. We just bricked two boards. Time to order another one, I guess. Stay tuned for part two. So I learned a lot in this video. You know what else I learned? Squarespace. Their websites look better than me writing on a chalkboard. Yes, my friends, they do. With squarespace.com, you can build yourself a beautiful, functional website that serves whatever purpose it is that you're into. You wanna make a website about Luke having the best butt in the biz or how it doesn't? You can do that. You can make a blog, you can make a personal portfolio, you can make a, hey, you can make a store. You can have a store where you sell, um, you know, license plate covers that say Luke has best bud in biz, or, or you know, or something people might actually want to buy, say for example. So head over to squarespace.com slash, I think it's Linus. I should know this kind of thing by now. So head over to squarespace.com, and if you guys use offer code Linus, you can save 10%, but you don't have to buy it up front. You guys can try it out for a couple weeks for free. They do a free trial. You can play around with their tools. They've got 24-7 tech support, so if you're having trouble building your site, you can reach out to someone via email or live chat and get them to help you out. Great stuff. They've got all kinds of stuff that like I used to talk about but isn't in my talking points anymore, but I still think is cool, like their little logo builder app, and uh, they've We've got this really cool thing coming up that... Oh, I guess I wasn't supposed to talk about that. Sorry, sorry. Well, whatever. They're always developing their tools and making them better all the time. So squarespace.com, make a beautiful website all of your own. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video as much as I disliked making it, then press like. Uh, also, if you liked it, press like. And uh, if you liked it, then maybe you'll consider supporting us either by buying a cool t-shirt like this one directly through our community forum or by changing your Amazon bookmarks one with our affiliate code. You can find the instructions for how to do that up in the eye in the top right corner. I think that pretty much wraps it up though. Thanks again for watching. And if you're wondering what to do next now that you've done all that stuff because you liked the video, maybe check out Channel Super Fun where we've got a new video that just came out 
where we uh, eat bugs. It's gross, but cool.